Hi, my name is Ian Fursa with VP Toolkit. Today we're here at the Be Electric stage. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate your camera's lens to tracker offset using the VP Toolkit plugin, Unreal Engine, and the Vive Marsh tracking system. So with the speed of an actual production, you don't have a lot of time to calibrate your lenses. You need the virtual camera to have the same offset as your real tracking device to your lens nodal offset. The lens nodal offset is the position that the real camera actually gets its image from. So we made the VP Toolkit calibration system to be able to calibrate your camera's tracker to lens offset. A lot of times you don't have a lot of time when you're on a production to be able to change lenses or if the tracker gets moved on camera. We've designed this system to be able to speed up that process so that operators running stages are able to move faster and not slow down the creative or the production process. In this video, we're going to assume that you already have your tracking set up because we're going to cover that in another video. So the first thing I want to note is how you mount your tracker. With the Vive Mars and other tracking devices, you want to make sure that it is extremely rigid on your camera. Or else if this unit gets bumped or moved or even repositioned, your calibration is going to be reset and you're going to need to recalibrate. Okay, let's get into Unreal and start working with the VP Toolkit plugin. So in our tracking tab, I'm going to make sure that my tracking is enabled and we're going to assume that you've already set this up by selecting your tracker. We've already did a lens offset, so I'm just going to reset that because we need to do another one. Once we've reset our offset, we're now going to be pointing directly in front of the tracker at the tracker's height. This isn't what we want. We want the image to be rendered from the position of our lens or of our nodal point. I'm also going to set my overscan to one. Generally, we put this above one to compensate for a little bit of lag in the tracking. And then we want to make sure that we're using the correct camera format. We're on the Alexa Mini LF. And then the format of our camera is 4.3K 16.9. This is important to get because Depending upon what format you're using, you may be using more or less of your camera's sensor. And then we wanna make sure that our focal length matches the focal length of the lens that we're using on our production camera. So now that we've set our basic camera settings so that our virtual camera matches the settings of our physical camera, we're going to calibrate the lens offset. While doing that, I generally like to put a border around our frustum. You can get to this setting by clicking on your stage, going to your ICVFX component, and then if you scroll down, you'll see inner frustum border, and then we can just enable that. That will give us a good indicator of where our frustum is and what our calibration is doing. Generally, this image is supposed to be the exact same frame as your camera's view. Okay, so let's do a calibration and then see what it looks like after. So in my tracking menu, I'm going to enable use tracker and then select my rover that I want to use for my calibration. So first you'll want to recenter your Vive Mars. This is so that when we do our calibration, we get the best results. Once you've placed the Vive Mars in the root of your stage, just press recenter and then select the Vive Mars rover unit that you'd like to use for calibration. Now that our stage is calibrated, let's put the tracker on the front of the lens and do our tracker to lens offset. So you can put the tracker on the front of the lens with a matte box, but we found that most matte boxes don't really work for this. And we've get better results if we take the matte box off and then put a lens cap on the lens itself. You'll want to put the tracker on the front of the lens and measure from your nodal offset, which you can find or either use the center of the lens. You can get pretty close by just looking in the lens and seeing where the iris blades are. So once you've measured the distance of the back of the tracker to the nodal offset of your lens or generally around the center, uh, you can input that into the pupil distance here in our use tracker section. 
You want to get this as flat on the front of your lens as possible so that you don't have any offsets in your rotation. Once you place it on the center of the lens, you want to make sure that you're not blocking any of your trackers so you can get the best calibration. Now that we have it on the front of the lens, we're just going to hit set. And then sometimes you can hit this a few times and see if you have any change or variation in your tracking. I generally like to click it until I feel it is uh, an average of any offsets. Once you set that, you can take off the tracker and take a look at where your tracking is. Now you can see that we're much closer to being properly calibrated. So if you continue to get the edge of the frustum into your shot because you're moving too quickly, you can also increase the overscan more. This will also stretch the resolution of your frustum across the screen. If your frustum is only 4K, think about that your frustum will also be stretching that 4K as wide as the camera's view. Once you've done your calibration, it's probably going to be really close, which you may be able to just increase your frustum size and it will no longer be an issue. And if you need to get back to production and keep moving, you can do this. We, we do this all the time. But if you want to fine tune it and you actually have the time, we're going to set it back to one. And then we're gonna click on our Frustum camera. I'm gonna hit select actor. And then I'm gonna click on the camera component. And then I'll actually click on our camera that is now in relation to the tracker. And we're gonna make some fine tune adjustments to that. You also wanna make sure that snapping's not on, on your rotation. It's up here in the top right of your viewport. You wanna turn that off so that this will be a little more fine tuned. So let's make some adjustments and see if we can get this calibration to be perfect. In most cases, the offset calibration is in the correct position, but just has a little bit of offset in rotation. So I like to start there. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. I made a couple fine tune adjustments. And before we move on to shooting, we wanna make sure to make a camera reference. This is going to save this lens offset and any other settings that we have within this camera. So if I just go up to our shot reference or camera reference and then hit the plus button, and then I'm gonna name this camera setup offset calibration. And then in the notes, I'm just gonna put camera setup with tracker offset calibration. And then I'm gonna hit the add button. And then now anytime I need to recall this calibration or potentially switch back to this lens, I can just load this camera reference and we'll have all of our settings. We just wanna make sure that the nodal offset is selected when you load the reference camera. So let's put our overscan back to around 1.3 to compensate for the lag in tracking. And let's get started filming. Again, my name's Ian Fursa with VP Toolkit, and I'll see you in the next one.